bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other Hello and welcome everyone to Children of Erte. And first, as usual, I kick it over to Adam. He tells us about our sponsors. Our incredible sponsors. First up is Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find an Electrum chest code on the overlay and circulating in chat. Thank you for joining us here. If you're coming from Idol Champions, it's an excellent game where you can unlock just so many characters at this point. Some of the people here on the stream, I think all of the people probably have characters in, the, in that game. So go check out those characters in Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. We also have Die Hard Dice, yeah. who has gifted us with a variety of numbered edges in order to, oh, wow, it's really <laughs> scraping the bottom of the barrel now, but, um, but, but, but I did it. I did it. Um, and so they have gifted us these dice that we are using here on the stream. You can get 10% off your order with the code Erte. And also in chat, you will see a gift card from Die Hard Dice um, that is, is going to be a giveaway at some point in chat. So keep your eyes peeled there. And finally, tonight you will hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape because epic games need epic sound. And I am Adam Bradford, the CDO at Demiplane, and I am playing a very, very curious and ready to see what is next, Silas Jordan. Amazing. Hey, everybody. I'm Elise Marie, and I'm a costume artist, cosplayer, and performing artist. I love saying that. And as always, I am playing the socially awkward and completely confused, but kind of excited, Feruza Armstrong. Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me around the internet as at DreamWisp or streaming as DreamWisp Jen. I do a bunch of different creative things all over the place. Um, and I am playing uh, Maeve Flynn, who has had the title of Troublemaker bestowed upon her. <laughs> and hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter as Oboe Lauren, where I sometimes play Oboe when I'm not playing D&D. <laughs> and today I am playing uh, Carolyn Neb Stern, who is <laughs> full of wonder and a little worried. <laughs> um, and hi, my name is Hope Lavelle. I am a motion capture performer by day and by night. I like to play some D&D. And today I am playing Robin Beckett, your granny who is going to give you hot cookies when you're blue. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, hello, and I am Deborah Amwell. I am the storyteller for this adventure. So thank you to everyone for being here, and thank you all for tuning in. So now make yourselves comfortable and settle in for the fifth chapter of Children of Erte. So when we last left you, you had all escaped from room A, having fought some shadowy presence, um, discovering as well that the people that you were on board this train with now suddenly are, are no longer here or only here intermittently. As you went and explored the rest of the train, you, you found a couple of interesting uh, things. You also made your way towards the engine where you discovered that boulders had fallen down off of the mountainside and blocked the train's path. So we will pick up with all of you outside the train. Uh, we have um, Neb and Robin and Maeve and Feruza sort of standing by the engine. And we have Silas up on top of the sleeper car looking ahead. And there's, there's still the, uh, the wavering yes. figures inside of the so train. As you you looked up into sort of the engine of this this train, the cabin of that engine, you every once in a while would see just a flicker, almost like static, the image of a, a person or, or the shape of a person um, up there. A couple of people. 
Hello? Hello? You hear who? only the wind. Who Who are you talking to, Neb? You, you, those, well, the people? I figured I'd try, but no. They don't They're not responding me. back, are they? I don't uh, think according... so. My back hurts. I'm 6'1". When I fall, I don't bounce. I break, okay? So I'm just sort of, give me a minute. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah, take whatever you need. Um, I feel and and Maeve produces it like a Costco size, like a giant bottle <laughs> of ibuprofen. <laughs> wow, yours is a lot bigger than mine, and I, I pull out literally a travel size, like a little one. Wow, you I learned, prepared. I learned the hard way you can never have enough nearby. Oh, can you spare? Can you spare? Do you like to do a medicine check, Maeve? Okay. Um, Uh, six. <laughs> six. Unfortunately, the ibuprofen, it just isn't, you know, it isn't doing what you need it to do for Rizzi. You, you take one, you maybe knock back a second, but mm. maybe they're expired. Who knows how long Maeve's had those in also her just bag. Very tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's very And also, you all just, fair, you're out, you are very tall. It may just be that it's just not strong enough for what I help you. <laughs> yeah, I think that may be it. I'll just, I'll take a few more and maybe they'll work later. Thank you, Maeve. Yeah. Appreciate it. No more than four ever at one time. Just it's an important piece <laughs> of knowledge to have. Never more than 800 more milligrams. Well, right. it, it doesn't look like this train's going anywhere. Yes, that right there is an obstacle. <laughs> is wow. that a pile of rocks? It's what it looks like. Can Silas hear them from here? Um, probably not. The wind is pretty strong, Silas. But you can be starting to make your way forward if that's what you'd like. Okay. Yeah, that's so Silas definitely makes trying to, after recovering yeah. the hoodie, uh, start making my way down to them. Yeah. Um, Robin. With your hearing aid in and standing there and, and all of you again really distantly hearing voices it has been mostly sort of scattered little bits of sound robin in your mind or you know through your, through through the, the the wind you just begin to hear sobbing weeping um you distinctly hear no ow Ah, uh, oh no, someone's out here and in trouble and trying to find the sound. It's definitely coming from up in the cabin. The cabin is in the, um, the engine. The engine, engine room. Mm -hmm. You guys, someone, someone's in this. We need, we need to get in there. And Robin's going to try to climb up and check the yeah. door. Um, you climb up the ladder. It's, you know, it's cold, but you know, you're, you're able to just sort of grab the rungs and pull yourself up as your head comes above. Again, you see these flickering images of, of, of people. The main sort of vista that you get as it flashes and then disappears is a small man lying on the ground. A larger woman kneels, lying over him, crying, screaming. As you and stay are, there and look, go ahead, sorry. So, and these are flickers? These are these flickering okay. images. You don't recognize this man or this woman. But you see flickers of, of perhaps Gloria standing off to the side as well. And suddenly, image of the man. He's small, he's skinny, he wears engineer stripes, he's balding, floats up in the air above you. He doesn't seem to look at you or notice you. He's looking down where these flickering images appear. You see the images begin to come together again, on, off, on, off, as they group. You feel an overwhelming presence, a power, an energy of love, grief, sadness. You look back up at the man as the image of him dissipates, joining the starlight up above. Robin lets go of the train, drops back down, and she's just silent tears. And she doesn't want to let anyone know what she's just seen. Okay. You, you guys, we, 
we have a, a lot to do here. We sh something's going on, and well, we need to just keep going, okay? Sure. Uh, go, where do you want to go next? Do we want to try to check on the other people on the train? Do we want to regroup and figure out how we got here? And if we want to go back? I don't want to go back. And uh, Silas is going to just kind of clap his hands if he's made his way uh, down there by that time. Okay. I, I want to find out more for sure, but I, I don't want anyone to feel like they're, I would say here, but I, here is here, but obviously we're here in a place where we're not with them. <laughs> so where is here? That's a good, that's a good question. Good question. When I saw the, yes, the presence of Albert, um, was he solid? Well, he wasn't flickering. It was more, it like was a not flick it, flickering, but he reminded you more of, you know, what the, what the woman looked like, sort of a, a full image, but mm -hmm. not fully physical. Okay. That's what I thought. Ghost. Um, you all, if, if we have perished, at least we have perished together. You, I don't feel dead. I don't, you don't look dead. I'm still hungry, so. Well, I'm if we were dead, hungry. you wouldn't know, right? And if, if you don't know what it's like to be dead, and perhaps this is what it's like. Maybe, but isn't it weird that we can touch things on the train and pick things up? I mean, is the train dead? Can we pick up dead parts of a train? That seems weird. I'm going to reach down and can I yeah. can I touch the snow? You can. Yeah, it's I'm cold. Gonna a, yeah, I'm going to make a snowball and say. You're able to do it. This seems, I mean, I, I know I watched that one movie with the, the, the ghost who can actually touch things and like make faces in the clay but that that seemed if i remember <laughs> took a lot of energy and i can just touch the snow so i don't know you saw a movie with this in it yeah you said not or... not this no <laughs> it was this whole movie about like someone who had died and they were trying to connect back with the person that they loved and it was it was an older movie it was kind of sweet though i liked you it but no to impress me Nip. <laughs> i saw an old movie too it was called alive we need to figure out what's going on here 100 percent oh are you gonna try you to know eat what? <laughs> i'm Silas, sorry when you, were, when you were up there did you see anything when you were up there vantage point anything yeah weird? i i i saw where people take the black and live out all their days trying not to be eaten by the white walkers like there's just do yeah, you think it's... we've actually gone into an, an, a fantasy novel i i have some bad news for you i okay. have some i have some good news is it real? If we're not in a fantasy novel, then we are definitely in some kind of fantasy. Well, if because we're dead, I monster. have a long list of people I need to go hunt. <laughs> so <laughs> let's figure out what's happening quickly so we can make some decisions. You know what? I'm sorry, everybody. I didn't mean to install such thoughts in your head. I am sure that if we were dead, Harold would be here to welcome me. So we are not dead, and we're going to figure out what is happening. And first, we should rest. I'm very tired. <laughs> uh, Perhaps we should go rest in the silver lined room? Yes. And get some food or something, because I know Silas has said a few times he's hungry. Yes. I could definitely eat something. And it's probably where they trapped the werewolf, too. So. <laughs> well, it was just on the bottom of the train, so they... Right? It Secret was just the Where do you think werewolves come from? They come Apparently from the bottom of trains. <laughs> They're not going to be coming from the sky. I mean, unless they Raining have wings. Werewolves. Unless it's a werewolf. Winged werewolves? I'm, make, I'm making a note. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've just summoned something into existence, and I don't know what. I'm kind of excited. I, listen. I want I, all the cheese in the world. I, I don't want to assume any of the fantasy stuff that we know is going to apply. So I think well, yeah, we just have to keep an open mind. Yeah, but it's halfway there, probably. 
maybe maybe but it's, it's good to keep an open mind and not make assumptions based Clearly. on the, you know the dragons that we've seen in fantasy stuff true but there's reason there must have been a reason that someone put that into the work order so someone believed it Clearly, they felt something. They had the fireproofing, and they were worried about the cold. They don't know anything about the safe yet. But there's a reason that they would have installed that silver plating. It wouldn't be a just a... Wait, you don't randomly a safe? ask for that. Hmm. And it's... They were miners as well, which seems strange to... Like they were young? <laughs> miners, not miners. <laughs> It's all in the pronunciation. That quote there, Silas. Yeah, that quote, Silas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maeve, did you, do you remember from that thing that you found, is the silver uh, under the entire train or just part one of the cars just or something? To, under the parlor floor is where it's listed. <sighs> okay, well, we need to go somewhere and rest because, yeah, I'm really tired, so, maybe. Yeah. Just looking at the car, uh, they that should be. The cars seem to be reversed, perhaps, or they've added one in. Because this has the first car as having mm -hmm. the galley and the dining room, and we have those further back than the than the quarters. I, I want to come back to this safe. Did you say there was a safe? Because I don't remember reading that. <laughs> was there a safe? Was there a safe? We haven't seen one. Well, no, I'm saying, like you said, it was on the, I, I don't know, the manifest, the Magna Carta, like what? Yeah, this. Did you not see? We talked about it. <laughs> oh, well, I, I found I it in a book. It. Oh, it said safe installation. I thought it was uh, saying that it wanted to safely install all the. Uh, perhaps. Oh, yes. They wanted. Install a safe yeah. instead of safe. <laughs> it's install. a safe, like an actual safe. Yeah, we should find that. Yeah. Also, Steam Insurger. Has anyone heard of Steam Insurger? Steam and Surger specialty like. builders. Ooh, uh, yeah, uh, Robin would like to do his. Go ahead, Robin. Please do a history check. You may I also do a history please. check on this? Uh, or may, may I help Robin? Want to help? Yeah, let's help Robin. So Robin's going to do an advantage to history check. You can add your intelligence modifier. Neb okay. checks her phone plus. and still no service. Still no service. No service. What is that? A plus? plus? Plus one. Plus one. So that'll be a twenty-four. A twenty-four. Um, so you remember back in the day, this was a this was a big deal company. Um, they had kind of, were sort of obscure. No one had ever heard of them, but they'd been around for a little while. And then suddenly in the thirties, they seemed to get a lot of money. They were building, you know, buildings in major cities. Um, but yeah, they they were kind of right on the kind of cusp of, of, um, computers and things like that back in the day. They're, they're no longer known as steam and serger. You're not quite sure who bought them out but you know they're now part of a conglomerate but um they seem to have come into some good fortune around the 1930s and, and their company really blew up oh yes this this makes sense of course my aunt used to tell me the stories they used to be a big company they somehow came into a great fortune and i mean i don't know what happened to them recently but back in the 30s oh they were something you were alive in the 30s I was in not 1930s? alive in the 30s, which is why I said my aunt would tell me stories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, but I'm not that old. So right. what's interesting to me here... So we're going to go back on the, the train. All of us, we're going to get back on there and... Well, well unless you plan to, to rest out here. <laughs> yes, where would you like to go uh, to go rest? And we can answer some questions and do some investigation. Would you like to build a snow fort? <laughs> Perhaps. We have tents in the engine room. We should remember that for later in case we have to make a grand escape. Somehow. Yes, in the in the luggage car. Yes, you saw tents yeah, in the luggage car. If really what had if what had happened had not happened, I would have totally taken you up on your snow fort idea. But I think right now, um, inside the train would be yeah. better. And I'm gonna look back out into the woods. Do I still see eye reflections out Perception there? Perception check, please. Sure. Oh, Okay, all right. Uh, 18. 18. Not only do you still see eye shine, but you hear rustling of leaves, the sort of little sort of light pop, 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 of paws or feet on the snowy ground. A twig cracks. So I know I talked about how we don't want to assume anything from any of the stuff that we've read or seen, 
But I do seem to remember that some of that media talked about how animals could still see or sense ghosts. I don't think we're dead, but I wonder if the creatures out here know we're here. The creatures out here? Okay, you know what? There are ghosts inside and there are creatures outside. <laughs> the devil you know. Let's get back in the train. <sighs> well, I mean, we're out in the wilderness. I'm assuming there's oh. wolves and owls. If it and is the things. she, the she, uh, the fairies, whatever they are, generally they don't bother you unless you bother them. But well, always I leaving mean, some treats. Wolves will be wolves. Such. Well, do you hear that? Creatures of the night and Silas like raises his voice. <laughs> And he's like, you, be, you best not mess blind. with us. All right, I'm, Van Helsing. I'm a black, black belt in Taekwondo, and I promise you, you don't want to mess with us. I, I think Maeve and Robin make some good points, and we should go inside for multiple reasons. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so as you climb right. back into the train, um, you know, the, the, the most forward car is your sleeper car, um, where you have all of your rooms, as well as room A, which has no door now. Um, and then, of course, the car uh, beyond that will be the dining car. Uh, okay. I suggest we, you know, uh, let us continue our sleepover. How does that sound? Mm -hmm. It feels safe. Yes. There. We're heading to the car. Yes. Window, Going to the so. lounge? Um, just a question in terms of the... So the, the lounge is in the same... The lounge is in a different car than the quarters. Yes. So does our car seem to, to fit the bill for the, the, the lady suite, the master suite, the toilet, the office? It does it doesn't, not. doesn't, right? Mm. That seems odd. Um, I mean, DM will remind you that Augie shared that they had done some extensive remodeling. Right. Of course, not room A, because they couldn't get into room A. So that yeah. could mean that this car is entirely new, perhaps, and the, the, the other car is what was the original first car with the staff quarters, the galley and dining room, and the lounge. Maybe. We'd probably have to find out what changes have been made. Well, we can the confirm decade. it if we can find silver under the floor in the parlor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe that's you want to rip up the vintage carpet? <laughs> First, the window, a little corner. Carpet. Oh, just, just a corner. Is it the kind of thing that's going to be under the carpet or under the train? Do we need to crawl? I mean, it not now, not... Oh, I'll go under the train. Beneath the parlor floor. You would, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's stock. The white wall's in front of it. <laughs> so, Silas is trying to catch the entire train. The top of it, yes. the side of it, now under it. Very, very Don't forget important. the safe. And the safe of it. <laughs> but that's that's my question, though. Do we think that the silver is something that is rip up the carpet, find it? Or is it under, like, the... What's the thing under cars that shields? The, the shield on the bottom of a car. That <laughs> right. keeps rocks from hitting all the stuff under a car. Right. I, I don't drive. I live in New York well, City. We have Why would a, I drive? a few options I don't know here. What that is called. Are there, are there are there windows in the parlor area? Yep. Uh, well, again, as far as you know, there is no parlor. You have a lounge oh, okay. and a dining room. So in the lounge, yes, there are there are windows in the lounge if you are asking about that. Okay. Perhaps we can put a mirror on a stick or something. stick. <laughs> <laughs> Just look that. underneath. That would be a way to <laughs> I see. I was excited was... about a mirror on a stick. I think this is a good idea, but l let's do that in the morning when there's light out here and Fair. not okay. All right. mirror light. and a flashlight okay. on a stick. <laughs> well, like, and a sun. I, I'm a little worried about <laughs> flashlights and their batteries dying. Yeah. I don't think we have Nothing. any electricity. I didn't even think of island. <laughs> some, some of us might have solar power phone chargers. Uh, do you? Well, excuse me, Miss Maeve. <laughs> I mean, Maybe leading us now. Maeve has basically a full emergency kit with her. <laughs> I mean, that that's nice, although I wouldn't charge my phone because you know, I don't know about any of you, but wherever we are, I do not have any signal. Yeah, but I have photos on it. 
I'm not saying that it's not worth oh, it. Oh, that's but... easy. We, why do we put a mirror on a stick when we have phones? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds way stick. more fun. Mirror on the stick. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. As we're who talking, got, who brought anybody, a selfie stick? Yeah, did anybody bring a selfie stick? <laughs> no, he I'm not. kind of looks around and goes, no, I don't have that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't even look at me. I'm not that kind of person. Um, <laughs> looking under the, the yes. train cars, yes. how, how much room is there between, say, the bottom of the train and the track? Trains are huge, right? So there's like three feet. These wheels are, you know, they're big and tall. I mean, Neb, the, the, the wheels on the engine are taller than you, right? I mean, these are gigantic things. You see these, these pistons that are the size of a tree trunk that connect to them and, and, you know, sort of back into the, the, the machinations. There are tubing and, 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 uh, pipes that just go left and right all over. I mean, this is a complex, you know, industrial machine here. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm not that tall. I can just crawl under. You can. Is that what you would like to do now? I'm going to see that Silas I said I would is... do it, but, I, but, 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 admittedly, and he kind of just like pats his, uh, you know, belly a little bit and says, I, I think you might fit better if you're willing to. In advance you still have... of going and trying to climb under the train and such. Why don't we check the things that are indoors first? Well, we're already see, out here. Pull up a corner of the carpet and you know what? anything. Silas is antsy and now I'm convinced. You still have that rope? <laughs> I do. Give me one end. Are you going to hold this on to it this time? go so well for you last time. <laughs> well, yes, yeah. but last time I was hanging from it. This time I just want to have it on me in case I get stuck. That's a great idea. Why don't we tie it around your waist? I've seen that in plenty of shows. Okay, just don't pull too hard if I ask. We get the climbing gear from the, the other car. Well, this is like had one of the pieces. Climbing gear there. and anchors. To do what you will. All right. So uh, where would you like to explore under the train, Nib? Uh, which which car do we think has the silver under it? Uh, the car that has the lounge. So the second car. Crunch, car crunch, crunch. Our... We'll head over to the lounge car. Right. So you go back down to the, to the dining car, which has the lounge, the dining room, and the crew quarters as part of it. Okay. Um, and are you gonna, you're going to slide underneath that car and take a look? Yeah. The, I right. got the rope around my waist. And I'll pull out my phone mostly for the flashlight. For the flashlight. And, and Silas comes and just kind of like really tries to move the train just to be sure that like <laughs> it is stuck. <laughs> you have like... you push against it. I mean, it, it's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it yeah, that, that's like totally fine. Nothing. I just want to make sure. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. I appreciate that. My, I sense. I, I have a feeling that it's going to take a lot to get this thing moving, and I could probably, maybe, get out from under it in time. But I appreciate the thought. And yeah, I will. All right. Crawl yeah, under. Get down and... on your hands and knees and slip beneath the train. Now you practically. Oh, wait. Oh. I will wait. What's up? <laughs> I just realized the parlor isn't going to be in this car. The parlor's <laughs> the missing car. Unless what? they change the cars, if we want to confirm yeah. that they didn't. We got to go under every car. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll start with this one. We'll and... start with this one. Okay. So mm -hmm. you're going to start under the the dining car, which has the lounge, which was the first place you came, the dining room where you had champagne, and then the second half of the car, which was authorized personnel only. So as you slide underneath that car, it's fairly spacious for you. You don't feel too cramped or anything. It does take you out of the wind a little bit. It's slightly warmer down here. Um, and some of the noise kind of cuts out. But all you can see are kind of the, the knees and below of your friends. So you get down and kind of roll over on your back, start to try to look up at the undercarriage of this uh, train. Would you please give me a perception check first? I thought it was a constitution for a minute. <laughs> Actually, she did say first. I mean, those constitutions. I did say first. Yeah. Uh, Deb, I would like you to roll that. You like actually. me to roll it? There you yeah, go. Yeah, I got a plus five to perception. Okay. As you're looking up and down, um, the only thing that you really seem to notice, you don't know that much about trains. You're not quite sure if this looks right or wrong, um, but there are just icicles hanging everywhere. Um, you know, the further back from that 
hot, warm engine. And even as you were standing up next to it, you could still feel some of the heat radiating off of it. Um, the further back you get, the more of these sort of hanging icicles all around the edge of the car. And I'll flip over the phone from the light to yeah. the, the camera part. And I'll okay. take a couple pictures in case I'm... Yeah. In case um, I can see something in the pictures someone else can see. Sure. You want to give me an investigation now? Sure. For Riz, if you have that axe, silver. <laughs> just in case the wolf fairies come and attack while we're... The wolf fairies. And with this, as yes. she turns the phone over, yes. and is like, okay, I really need to make sure that this is here. And I'm going to double check that my rock is still in my ba uh -huh. in my pocket uh -huh. and think real hard about what I think aged silver under a train might look like. <laughs> and I'm going to give myself a little bit of support. But gotcha. gotcha. Deborah, I'd like you to also roll that okay. investigation check. So, so it's a plus isn't... five plus a d4. Gotcha. Okay. So you're thinking about it and you're thinking about like, oh, you know, in my like mother's room, she had an old little silver box, right? And she, she, she left it out, you know, didn't really take proper care of it. And you remember specifically how silver gets that like dark gray tarnish Tatum. on it. So this mm -hmm. real clear idea of what the patina on silver looks like. And as you look all along this metal and you're using your camera to, to really zoom in closer to see things, um, you're not seeing anything that is, that is reacting that way to oxygen. This, this feels like iron. This feels like steel. It, um, none of it sort of glimmers or shines or anything like that. You know, so even though there is gray metal, you're fairly certain that none of this is silver to your experience. Okay. I'll stash the phone and crawl back out. Yeah. Uh, stand up. Oh, I'm all dirty now. Um, I didn't see anything under there. I don't think the silver is under that car. So either it's under the, the carpet or under another car. Um, I'm willing to go check all the other cars, but do we want to wait for the I morning? I think we can check those Yeah, tomorrow. it's dark. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah but there's great. food inside also. Yeah, but now <laughs> now we know, like, it's pretty easy for me to get under the car. Yeah. Oh, and here's the rest of your rope. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh. So, yes, feeling the, 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 the cold, you know, breeze come back towards you, uh, you know, kind of getting through your, your hoodies and, and your jackets where it can, um, you start to make your way back into the lounge where you were camping out before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You get inside and as you close the door behind you, you could just feel just your, even your own body heat out of that wind. You feel much more comfortable. All of the blankets are still laid out. There's the remnants of the cheese and the bread and the chocolate and the, the booze that you were drinking before. But of course, that now feels like another lifetime. Mm -hmm. As you sit down, is there anything else you would like to ask about, discuss, explore before you take a long, long nap? Um, well, first is definitely going to sit down and like start picking at whatever's left there food wise okay. and probably i'm assuming silas is joining her anyone else <laughs> i'm definitely and, and silas is trying to eat all of it but in a very <laughs> polite way like so so he's like are, are you gonna eat that <laughs> yes. you want more of that <laughs> robin is is trying her hardest to stay awake but she's yes. the first one out she's okay she's so gone finds a corner curls up <laughs> Yeah, with her big fluffy or her quilt, and she just kind of nods off. She can't keep up with these youngins anymore. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, all right, so everyone's going to. I would to... like oh, to put name. out whiskey and food uh -huh. from fairies. Okay. Say, I'm not sure if you're out there, but you know, here and here and please just <laughs> don't worry. So don't out on the balcony. Harm. The liquor won't freeze, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Your guess is as good as ours. <laughs> Listen, uh, we saw that one light that came into this car that started this whole whatever this is. So I think it's 
it can't be a bad idea to be kind to these creatures, right? Before True. Silas goes to sleep, he is yes. going to take the rope and he is going to uh, find anything that he thinks can make noise. So cans, um, okay. glasses, anything, and like kind of tie it off and do his best to drape as much of it as he can around the entry. Uh, how many doors in this? Uh, there's the one that leads outside directly where you are. Then there's the dining room next door and then the curtain that leads to the rest of the, the quarters back that way. Um, you, you haven't been over there. You don't know what the door situation is on that side. Yeah, so I want to go look and just see how many places can exit or enter this car that we're in. Okay. So, uh, Silas, you make your way into the dining room. There is a curtain between the lounge and the dining room that has already been sort of pulled aside and, and uh, you know, roped up. Um, and then there's the curtain kind of on the opposite side of the dining room that, you know, heads, you know, further in. This one has the chain across it with the sign that says, no, you know, authorized personnel only. I am going to move, like, so the, the opening where that chain is, is yes. it just a hallway? It's a curtain across. If you want to open the curtain, yeah, you can look definitely beyond. opening the curtain. I'm not going in, but I'm gotcha. looking. So as you as you pull the curtain aside and kind of look down, it's a long hallway. Um, it's just very similar to the sleeper car. There are doors along one side. Many of those doors are now open. Windows along the the uh, open side. Um, way down at the end, you can see a door that exits this car. And just beyond those windows in the dark, you can barely see it, but that'll be the caboose just behind the end of this car. Is there um, anything large in this room, like a uh, chest? Or... So this is the dining room. So there's a very large dining room table. There are, uh, you know, about seven chairs um, placed around it. There's a big cabinet that's filled with dishware and things like that. Okay, so if there is anything that Silas believes that he can, with possibly the help of another individual or two, move in front of this hallway to try to jam it up. Okay. Uh, and he's kind of muttering to himself. He's like, I I've seen the zombie shows. Like, right. Uh, th this is important to do. Like, we're all about to go to sleep. We have to make sure that nothing can get in here. And um, so I don't know if that's the table. Um, so everything but the chairs is bolted to the ground okay so i'm going to take the chairs okay. and i'm going to make a uh, house of cards with the, the <laughs> chairs and basically uh in the chairs though i'm going to put uh, any glassware i can uh -huh. find or anything uh -huh. that will make it that will try to make noise Loud if something stuff. disturbs them. Yes. gotcha gotcha okay one other thing we might want to do is uh like a line of chalk or powdered sugar or something that if someone steps in it they leave tracks Ooh. Oh, I thought for a moment you were afraid of ants, and I was very concerned. <laughs> well, like well no, the danger of, of you sugar and snails. Snails can't like pass the chalk line. Would be to that that is mind. an excellent idea, Maeve. Uh, do we have any of that? Well, this is a dining car. There's got to. We know. There's I mean, a I chef. have makeup powder. I have. Oh. I thought you were going to say something else, but, <laughs> well, but I, I think I think that's Sorry, a good Harvey. idea. No, no, no. I, I, trust me, I'm not judging on that. Okay, trust me. Um, but uh, but yeah, like wherever we can find uh, anything like that, and and so Silas is going to start to try to go through. Okay. He's just going to open take, the cabinets. Take down there. your, oh, you open the cabinets in yeah. the dining room. It's just filled with dishware and things like that. There's no um, foodstuffs here. Um, this is this is the dining room. So it's, you know, they're glass cabinets with ornate, you know, pewter, uh, you know, uh, serving Do you dishes. Think Ms. Is there Robin's a salt shaker? Has baby powder? There is salt. There are, there's a number of salt shakers. Salt isn't, I, salt isn't the best because it's larger grains and not quite as sticky. But, well, but also salt has some. <laughs> again, again with the fairy tales. Why am I going to these stories? They were children's stories. Well, <laughs> Meanwhile, Robin in the corner just snores lightly, <laughs> very happily in Maybe dreamland. Sort of Listen. absent mindedly fiddles with a, a necklace yes. that she's wearing. Silas is going to go over to Miss Robin's bag. Is that around? <gasps> yeah, be right next to doing? her. What are you doing with no, her things? No, no, listen, listen. All of you can watch me. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just saying, like, it, she seems like the kind of person that would have baby powder in her bag. 
And I just you want think? to check. Why you don't you not open her bag without her permission? Uh, well, well, you come to it. You come. To I it. said I, I have powder. We can I, use. Can I? You have white make... powder. <laughs> Makeup powder. Makeup. Uh, yeah, but like that's well, loose powder. <laughs> okay, if you think it'll work, that's fine. I I think it'll work, but I. I mean, unless you've brought an industrial size amount of powder, <laughs> that's not a lot. I, I was just thinking, we know there's a chef on this train. We, we got taught all about how awesome they are. That means mm -hmm. there's a kitchen. There's probably flour in the kitchen, right? Let's go find it. All right, Feruza and Neb go to the uh, the house of chairs that uh, <laughs> Silas is built. Oh, wait a minute, are you going to make us take that down? <laughs> well, it's only about what ten of them seven chairs yeah he built the seven, he seven chair I, I pyramid put, I put all these this glassware in there like uh, and silas starts to take it down and tries to be as careful as possible but i'm okay. sure things are crashing every day. <laughs> so the 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 four of you dismantle the uh the trap there the noisy trap <laughs> um and uh you are left with the curtain and the chain across with the sign all right let's see if we can I See mean, we've already here. broken Take an down. entry into one place on this train. We might as well go beyond the don't go beyond. <laughs> These are no Signs land are land very land. powerful. <laughs> I've, I've broken so many laws in the last couple of hours. We might as well break this one. It Lead only on for us. Let's see All if right. we can find the kitchen. You unhook the chain and push the curtain aside. Um, as you reveal this, this corridor, again, the lights sort of flicker on off on off every once in a while but they're mostly off and there's this just little bit of haze in the air you can see fine but it is like everything's just a little bit hazy um as you step in you can see there's a number a number of doors along the the inside uh half of this corridor um the first door you see kind of a crew chill area there's a little table with two you know like a banquette right in front of the window and a couple of chairs um you can see already you know little books and magazines and things that have been left out um the next door uh leads into a narrow pantry all right now we're in business <laughs> uh you want for you want to check the top shelves i'll check the bottom i got it i got it yeah <laughs> Like I I will, I'll go low. She'll go high. Let's She'll go high. Uh, let's do some flower looking. So uh, you can each do an investigation check for flower. Uh, while they're doing that, may I go? You want to keep going? On to see yeah, what else absolutely. is up ahead. So Maeve, yes, the next door and appears to I'll be, be the a kitchen. I'll be cautious with this. I'll be a little. Okay, bit... you want to give me a stealth? Sure. Uh, that is a nineteen. A 19. Um, so yes, the next door is the kitchen. You can look in, you can see it's been cleaned up for the night. Really good, like ship shape chefs, you know, uh, clean for the evening. Um, as you continue down the rest of the way, we'll come back to you in just a second. What were those investigations? I was 19. 19? I was 22. A 22. You find not only flour, you find powdered sugar, you find uh, rice, you find, you know, tins of salt um you know all kinds of sort of lots of different types of spices and different colors well Maeve says just... that the salt wasn't good and so the rice probably won't be so flour and sugar flour sugar and i mean she just sort of starts putting she brought her she doesn't leave anywhere without her messenger bag now so okay, she's great. putting some of the stuff like in her messenger yeah. bag anything else you think we need in here uh is, like, is, is there, there cheese or uh, well, Neb was thinking along the same lines, but less about perishables, and, yes. and she's thinking about those MREs. Yes, and I'm like oh, those, those are disgusting. Were so gross, though, Neb. <laughs> Is there like um, Cliff bars or snack bars yeah. or breakfast bars? You know, I mean, something... have you ever heard of aged cheddar? <laughs> like it's fine, right? I mean, listen, I'm not disparaging cheese. I'm just thinking. <laughs> I'm just thinking about variety. That's all. It's also awfully fragrant for uh, yeah, nearby animals oh, compared that to too. sealed. All right, give me mm -hmm. a quick investigation for um, 
the the for like, granola bars and that kind of thing. <laughs> That that's only a twelve. Only a twelve. Um, you you find a couple. Let's see, you find like three granola bars, uh, kind of in a basket somewhere. A box, a, a big box. It looks like it was full at one point, but there only seem to be three left in this location. Okay, I'll show them to Farouz and be like, "Well, it's yeah. a couple in case we wait need." Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. This was a new voyage. This was like an entirely new trip, and all of these granola bars are gone. <laughs> That means that we are not alone on this train. Well, we knew that there was the, <laughs> the conductor. There was <laughs> well, wait a second. Augie. There but was... it is weird. You've got to admit, it is weird that they would just go for the granola bars. Listen, <laughs> everything that you've seen, and that's the weird thing? I'm just saying, there are signs everywhere. I mean, maybe they just really like chocolate everything chip granola bars. a clue. Maybe. You never know. There might be were fairies that like granola bars. Are you hearing Sam's Wing, winged were fairies? Winged were were fairies. <laughs> winged. <laughs> Maeve, as you very quietly approach the next door, um, as you peek around the corner, this is a um, living quarters. It's got two sort of cot like twin beds that clearly, you know, fold up to the to the walls and fold back down depending on what you want to use. Yeah, Murphy bed type things, but uh, but the long ways, like a train a train bed. Um, there's a, a small desk in the room as well. And in this space, when the lights flicker on, every once in a while, you see the image of two men standing there. They're hugging each other. Um, you recognize one as Charlie, the redheaded porter who took your bags at the beginning, and the other is Alexander, the Asian man who introduced himself as the chef. Um, they hug each other and appear to be crying. Um, but then the lights flicker out and no one is there. I'll look a little bit more closely at what's here in mm -hmm. terms of belongings, uh, yeah. anything on the desk, in the desk. Let's start with the desk then, an investigation please for the desk. All right. Wait, where's Maeve? <laughs> 21. A 21. Um, there are lots of little, you know, papers and notes. A lot of it is like log lines, things that they, you know, keep notes about their jobs and, and what they need to do. There's a time card that they've been filling out. Um, is that, you can is also there a date the time card? Yeah, it is It is the date that you expect. The, the... Does that change with the lights flickering at all? It does not, no. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it stays the same no matter, you know, when the lights flicker. Um, you also see... Um, uh, they've been playing like Hangman. There's like a little place where they've been playing little games together. Uh, a couple of, you know, just little books of things. Um, Any you know, word that sticks out that they took? On Hangman? Yeah. Um, karate. <laughs> it's a really good Hangman word <laughs> for <Okay>. you all. Because <laughs> A-T-E, people don't, <laughs> they don't think of it. Some great trivia. It's a really yeah. good hangman. I mean, I've, won, I've won a lot of hangman using the word karate. Good <laughs> <laughs> to know. Note to self. Don't play dead. <laughs> <Deb. laughs> it's, it's a good puzzle it. word, too, if you're building puzzles because people, you know, it has that different uh, pronunciation. But anyways, I, I digress. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it is to, to your sort of casual glance looks like a room shared by two guys who are good buddies. Okay. Kind of thing. Um, um, all right. Go ahead. Cool. No, no. Okay, okay great. <laughs> uh, so then uh, Feruza and uh, Neb and Silas, you have powdered sugar, you have flour. Uh, seasoning. <laughs> you have seasoning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. I want to, you know what, Feruza's going to look for, are there like utensils and like uh -huh. cooking supplies in uh -huh. here and stuff? Mm -hmm. She's specifically thinking in her head like protection here so she's gonna look for like you know meat tenderizers they look like hammers sort of yes <laughs> nice. she's Absolutely. like i'm thinking weapons and I, like she's looking to find like stuff like that so she wants to find like cooking utensils gotcha you don't see any cooking utensils in the pantry no what are you Maybe looking for in the kitchen. What, what are you looking for Weapons, Silas. I'm weapons. thinking about weapons. I mean, we don't know what we're up against here. Uh, you're right? gonna bludgeon them to death with like a sack of potatoes? Like, 
listen, Silas, uh, a moment ago, we would have been really happy to have her axe. So I don't, well, I don't well, yeah, blame. Yeah, but that is an actual weapon. Like, uh, well, I mean, we're not up against things that we're used to being up against. So maybe this is an opportunity to see if something different, unexpected, actually might regularly work. regularly go up against things that you need weapons for? I mean, except for the last, like, hour or so. But before that? Um, it's kind of a long story. Oh, Maybe if we have an opportunity to uh, share, I wouldn't mind saying. But, I mean, basically what Neb said before was it was very true. I, I come from a, a family where, you know, having an axe in your in your bag is kind of normal. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's I'm yeah. I'm so sorry. I stuck my big foot in my mouth. I'm 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 so sorry about that. No, no, I mean, no, I mean, it's most people don't. I mean, I, I never usually have an opportunity to take it out, but I've always had it like sort of with me. It's a kind of Faruza, if like, you want to keep your axe out all the time now, we accept you. Yeah, I kind of want an axe myself even though there's no way I can wield it any anywhere the same way that you can. Robin, we'll get you one that fits. I have an idea. When all this is over and we're all back home, we do like a meetup in New York or something. Or we do something where we can all reminisce about reunion. This whole thing. Yeah, sure. Get a little tiny axe neck. There you go. <laughs> Robin, in your sleep, you don't wake up, but you're dreaming. You know, whatever about the you know whatever things you normally dream about, but somewhere. In the back of your mind, in this dream, you start to hear um, sort of panicked breathing. <laughs> what? Oh my God. <laughs> Things like that. Um, you just sort of stir a little bit uh, as there's sort of a clatter that you hear again in the back of your mind, but you drift back into calm sleep once again. <laughs> back to the rest of you on the train. So, so where, where is Maeve? Has she wandered off? Or... I'm, I am up ahead. I continue down the hallway. You continue down the hall. Okay. The next door is yet another. Because there was nothing of... else to look at in the living room. There was nothing right? else to look at. Nothing I mean... under the mattresses or anything. Oh, I mean, yeah. It depends I'll, I'll how thoroughly quick... you want to search. I think Maeve instinctually just checks under okay. mattresses. So give me That's... give me an investigation from the mattresses in here. Okay. Silas is going to start to try. Like, I don't know if he can see. Yeah. Like where she is in the hallway or not. But you can't because like she's gonna... in she's in one of the rooms. Okay, so it's he's gonna start gingerly wandering okay. that direction. Okay, gotcha. So where's your investigation for under the mattress? Eleven. Eleven. Um you find some really classy old playboys. Super yeah. classy. I make a note of that because I'm I'm super amused by them. But also <laughs> I'm gonna just like put them back in. Slide them back in. <laughs> Um, you do you, boys. You do you. Give me another stealth check, please. 21. 21. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Silas, as you're continuing down, you now pass by the kitchen door. You can look in and see this really clean, ship shape kitchen. I'm just going to yell back down the hallway and say, Hey, uh, Feruza, if you want some weapons, there are probably some giant knives in here. And then he's going to keep walking. Keep looking walking for through. Okay. You want to go check the kitchen? <laughs> she, you are even in the the doorways. They're like right there for you, <laughs> Farisa. Yeah, she's like please. Oh yeah, I'll be back. Just people. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll follow. I'll follow you. Uh, you're okay. probably gonna know more about weapons than I will, anyway. So you guys go into the kitchen. Um, you can give me a perception check. I'm going to help Feruza. Yeah. Because she's going to know more about weapons than okay. I will. So, so Feruza's going to roll for perception. We'll add your wisdom bonus to that. Plus three. Plus three. <gasps> 16. I needed it. Thank you. For some reason, um, I'm like, crap. There is a butcher block of knives, and they look sharp and glorious. Um, there's definitely some meat tenderizing hammers uh, along the way. You see, um, uh, <laughs> um, you okay. see, like, um, Oh, what else would there be? Oh, just yeah, like like other like heavy mallets, a rolling pin, cast iron skillet that's real heavy, go full Rapunzel. Um, <laughs> yeah, really, you know, a, a good bunch of heavy stuff there. Big old pots. 
Nice. And she picks up this one meat Which tenderizer that looks almost like a gavel. Yeah. <laughs> like someone has a sense of humor. This is mine. Taking this for sure. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's see. And she's just taking certain things. Like she takes the she takes a couple of knives. She okay. takes some of the little knives. She takes the okay. meat tenderizer. Yeah, those are the things she takes. Cool. And Neb um, has pulled out one of the knives of the yes. butcher block, one of the bigger ones, and is just staring <laughs> at it. It's the width of your forearm. Like, it's basically. <laughs> you know, I've helped my parents cook in the kitchen, but uh, I'm not going to say I'm very good at it. Maybe I should go for something more blunt. Like me. Like me. I, so <laughs> like I, me. I, I, I don't know. Standing in the hall as you continue to make your way down, suddenly you feel <gasps> this cold burst of air kind of come through your back as this suddenly flash as the lights flicker on in front of you and you see Augie standing there <gasps> looking around, panting. She's, you know, covered in 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 sort of the the, the you holding one of the, the cans. Augie, I try to touch her. You Shoulder. touch her. She screams. The lights go out. She disappears. Your hand falls down through nothing. Oh, that Do is we, downright you hear you, you hear the scream for sure. Oh, is she covered in? She's not covered. She's I, I shouldn't. I mean, I said they were. She's holding the the things that he strung up above the door. She's holding some of the cans and and some of the string that he used is sort of on top of her shoulders, and she's oh, panicking. Cool. I'm gonna lock eyes with Fruz and then rush back out into the hallway when I hear uh, Augie scream. So I just saw Augie. And she was just holding my traps. What? Yes. She was holding my traps, but then she disappeared again. Disappearing act. Maeve, as the lights flicker, you see her run into that room and seem to you know, could say, oh my God, what's happening? And then it flicks out again. Uh, the next time the lights flicker, all three of them are no longer in the room. Maeve, maybe time to kind of get back and maybe like, Barricade ourselves in. What else is ahead? There's one more door. Then the hall sort of turns a little bit and probably a room beyond that. Who am I kidding? Let's go to the end of the hall at least. I really I just mean, want to honestly, know. I, I don't need to go in. I just want to see what's there. Yeah, that's fine. I'm with you. Continue. Let's do it. And yep. continue yeah, continue down. Carefully. As you continue down, the next door opens into an identical room to the one that you just saw. However, half of this room is perfectly ship-shape uh, clean. Uh, hospital corners on that cot, uh, well-organized. You even see there's a, a up on the cork board on the wall nearby is like a time schedule of everything with notes on it. The other side's a little bit messier. There's like a tie-dyed uh, like canopy that they put up above there. Um, in this room, you see things, you know, you might see, uh, you know, maybe there's a bra hanging up drying in this room. So this is a, a woman's quarters. Perfect. Um, looking at the timetable, I'm wondering yes. if that will be of any use to determine how, like, where we might be to triangulate our location. Yeah, fantastic. Grab it, um, if you'd like it, for that, uh, for that purpose. And, uh, yeah, when we have a chance to sort of officially take a look at that, we will. Uh, the last room, as you take yourself down around the corner, is a bathroom. There are two toilet stalls, uh, two sinks, and a large shower. Are there any towels? There are lots of towels. There's at least five towels in this space. I so take them all. You take all five <laughs> all right, that was like a great... Wait, So are you there with me now? I'm, I'm uh, way well, I... ahead of you, and I was being super stealthy. I, 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 well... Are you lying for that, or are you looking at the other stuff? I mean, I was saying that I was going in your direction. Coming to find you, and he got <laughs> stopped to... by Augie. When you came out of the boys' room, you would have been in the hall. I mean, I know you're being stealthy, but he probably would have seen yeah. you. Uh, enter okay. The hall. And anything under the mattresses in the girls' room? Investigation check, please. 17. 17. Um, uh, you do find underneath the one mattress on uh, the very neat side is Gloria's uh, pocket watch. It's been sort of wrapped in velvet and kind of, you know, stuck underneath between the, the uh, mattresses. Um, on the other side, which is a little bit messier, um, you see some sketches. Um, they're mostly sticking out. It's more like they were sort of shoved in there to kind of keep, uh, you know, 
keep him off the floor. Um, but yeah, some ones are a decent artist. They're just like really nice pencil sketches. Um, some of them look like some of the other crew members. So the sketches are of the crew specifically? Yeah, okay. yeah of a couple of the crew. You know, some of them are more abstract, you know, maybe just like Alexander sort of, you know, sitting like this, looking down at a, a cookbook or something like that. Okay. People caught cool. him. Um, let me just Passive take a quick with your glorious pocket watch. Is yeah, there absolutely. anything? I know she was kind of, well, I didn't get a close look at it. Yeah. I'd love to take a, a decent look at it. Sure. I mean, you have time now. So as you kind of look over it, in it my has, hand, in your hand, <laughs> right there. Terrible. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no apologies ever necessary. Uh, it's nicely engraved. Um, it has one of those sort of push button tops that pops it open and closed. There's a, 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 you know, a, a, um, a wind on it. It has to be wound in order to be used. It's not a battery. Um, it's a very clear sort of, um, simple, um, design to it. However, it has a little Ivy design that goes around the edge, like a little vine of Ivy around the edge. Oh, well, see, that's my style. <laughs> Is there anything in the bag interesting? Or in the velvet bag? The bag? Mm -hmm. It's just a very nice velvet bag. Um, it does, give me an investigation check. Where, where, uh, is, where have we established Silas is? Silas, if you went <laughs> to the bathroom. Okay. You're so, in the bathroom stealing towels. Okay, that, that, that's fine. So I get the towels out. Like, is she, is she now doubled back from where Silas would be? I, I think what, what we're going to say is that she has not yet come to the bathroom. Um, that she, you know, you saw her come out. She went into the room for the women, women. You took a glance and then continued on to the bathroom. Got it. Okay. Does that sound good to you, Mick? Yep. Yep. And Fariz and I are still out in the hallway holding yeah. sugar and flour yeah. and rolling yeah. pins and going. And Why Robin's having towels? a lovely, lovely sleep. None of you are going to get a long rest. If you... <laughs> oh my God. No. <laughs> He's going to be the only one who's going to get I'm, the rest. I'm, okay. Okay, so yes, Maeve, uh, what was the question on this one? Uh, I was looking at the velvet bag. Velvet bag, yes, investigation on the bag. Uh, it was a 14. A 14. Um, the only thing you're getting from it is you, you can see that it's been repaired, like hand-stitched repaired. You can see the machine stitching and then little places where someone's gone in and, and repaired it. So someone's taking care of this bag. They want to keep it in use rather than get a new one. Well, let's go to Feruza and Neb. So are you already, you're, you're spraying, you know, spreading the flour and the sugar and doing all of that. So yeah. you're back in the room with Robin. Yes. And uh, in fact, Feruza did take the smaller cast iron frying pan. Okay. So she's going to like tiptoe over to Robin where Robin's sleeping and sort of lean over. And I think she slept through everything, but she's going to put a hand like on on yes. robin and go yes. and she has this frying pan above her head forgetting <laughs> that she's been brandishing it for the past like five minutes yes robin robin uh, robin uh, what, what what why why are what? you okay just making sure you're okay in here we had a, a few yes i'm happen. still alive yes i didn't <laughs> die in my sleep. sleep very still <laughs> just concerningly still um, you do notice as you come back into the lounge area that the trap that Silas set up has fallen to the ground. Most of the things are down there. It has been set off. Did you see anything? Did you hear anything while you were sleeping? Because we oh, were in the no. kitchen. I, I was sound asleep. I, I didn't even... What, was it, you guys have done a lot in here. While I, <laughs> I, I think it's only been a couple of minutes. I'd like to join you in getting a some sleep soon but i can't help but be really interested and confused by what just happened what just happened we can touch and move and interact with everything and the people on this train can touch and move and interact with the exact same stuff but we can't see or interact with each other you don't oh, find that awesome. weird yeah, it's more it's really fascinating weird. than weird. It's 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 kind of both. I, I I think I'm too tired to figure it out right now, but it's something I'm I think is important. That is something yep. important. And we also should get some sleep before the sun <laughs> comes up because 
that's going to be part two of whatever the heck is going on in here, whether it's a were, fairy, or something else. Oh, you don't have to tell me twice. And she kind of curls back <laughs> out. Curls <laughs> back out. <laughs> Um, so Neb and Feruza, if you finish spreading your material on the ground so that you have, you know, somewhat something will leave tracks, are you going to try to sleep as well? Yeah. Uh, Feruza's just going to sit where she can, okay. like, angle herself and see the door directly. Okay. Gotcha. And then just sort of take out of her bag. <laughs> close her eyes. I want you to have an, a stuffed animal axe. Like, uh, stuffed, like an axe uh, plushie. A yeah. proper, a proper lovey. An axe Aww. lovey. Aww. Uh, Neb yes, is Neb's gonna take off the jacket and everything and kind of curl up in her blanket, but is not gonna go to sleep. She's gonna move so that she can see down the hallway where mm -hmm. Maeve and um, Silas have gone, mm -hmm. mostly so that she can stay awake until they're coming back to warn them that, gotcha. hey, there's flour on the floor okay. and make sure they come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keeping an eye out, but in, we're prepared for sleep. All right, back to Maeve yeah. and Silas. Silas is gonna walk past the room with towels. <laughs> Maeve, as you so. glance towards the door, you just see Silas pass carrying an armful of towels. <laughs> Maeve, that's probably it for today, Strangest right? People. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, um, does Silas say gonna, that he ha she has something in her hands? Um, I'm not going to give you that. I mean, she's she's over by the beds. Um, Maeve, would you have tried to hide it when he came by? Okay. Yeah. Um, so why don't you give me a perception check real quick, Adam? Okay. Um, that's a ten. It's a 10. Yeah, you don't even see her kind of, you know, move to, to, to hide it. Um, you just, you know, just see. Did you find sitting. anything? Uh, some sketches of the crew. There's a timetable here. Um, clearly, this was, th these are the two rooms for the, the, the crew. So like the conductor. What was her name? Gloria? Gloria. Yeah. But Gloria, no Gloria. Aggie. So. No, no Gloria. No Gloria, no Augie. No Charlie, no Alexander. Um I did see Augie. Yeah, running. yeah, we we saw Screaming, Augie. she she ran into the boys' room and said, What's yeah, she happening? She had my rope. Well, if she had your rope, that means there's some interaction with the same reality. Could we leave them a note? Perhaps. Um, I've seen many movies where that works, so. I'm going to grab one of the sketches. I'm going to pocket yeah. the watch, and I'm going to grab yeah. one of the sketches and write on it. Um, I don't even know what. How, what, how, how would you? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Just put problems. It worked yeah, totally we, great. Um, we have problems. <laughs> <laughs> we have big problems. Uh, so many problems. We are in some sort of dream world. We saw you. Help. Can you see uh, us? Leave us notes and information wherever you can. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do here. You, uh, you got a better idea, Silas. No, I mean, I think it's a great idea. Like I said, I've seen this work all the time in movies. And so... I'm going to leave it on. Okay. I guess on Gloria's bed. Okay. Yeah, because like I would definitely leave it on Gloria's bed because Augie is going pretty nuts right now. Um, and so I don't think Augie is slowing down to read anything. It just will stand out more in this side of the room rather than that side of the room. True. Seems the reason to me, but so let's do that. And then we can head back to the to get some rest because okay. it's been a long day and you notice that that i am sort of favoring hmm. the the ankle that didn't get knocked right when I fell. right sort of okay so as part of this note the, the 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 three sort of points you're making are we are trapped in dream world oh 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 i just should note that we opened the room should okay I? you want to write that as well room? yeah yeah that's a great idea Okay, so you're saying we opened room A, we're in some kind of dream world, help if you can. 
Is that that's basically and communicate? And, and maybe ask can, it's, can you it's see made. us? Look, say say we can see you. Okay. Can you see us? Why don't you rage then? And I just <laughs> hand it to Silas I mean, and let I, him. I, can... I mean, you can add to it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah add to Seems it. All like right. You have ideas. And are you silent, signing both of your names? I put my initials. Okay. If he sees that she put initials, he puts his his name in big capital letters, Silas. Okay. So it says M F Silas. <laughs> Maeve kind of wants to move it and make it a little in parentheses is a. No. <laughs> All right, and you lay this out on top of the very neat bed, which you imagine is um, is uh, glorious. Um, so uh, as you are walking back towards the room, you see Neb points to where they did the, you know, the flour and the, the sugar um, so that you can avoid it and make your way in um, and just sort of curl up down there. Um, Out of curiosity, yes. as we walk past the kitchen and the, the galley, yeah. um, what are the floors like in those rooms? Um, so the, the hallway is carpeted. The um, uh, Obviously the, the bedrooms are carpeted. The kitchen and the bathroom and the pantry and the um crew room so the sort of all the rest of the spaces have what look like um you know like vinyl or uh, laminate flooring tile flooring so as you all begin to drift off to sleep to get your long rest Maeve give me one last investigation check as you just sort of take a glance at the timetable 19 19 as you're looking at it and you start to sort of calculate out how many hours the train has been running and what time she expected to get into the station for the mining company you think you're probably only five ten minutes away by train oh wow at this point at which point you realize it and fall asleep <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll take our long rest here go ahead and do what you need to do for Oof. your character sheets Yay. you mostly survived <laughs> <laughs> you did survive you did survive i think every once in a while neb in her sleep rolls over onto the hurt side that hit the, the side yes. of the train and you hear mm, oh. and then she rolls back over but yeah And actually, while they're doing that, maybe I'll take this advan ad um, this moment to sort of take advantage of and say, um, we're already seeing some amazing fan art from Children of Airte starting to come Yay. out. Um, we shared with you about uh, the incredible map that was made a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago. Um, and now I think it's at AV uh, Bunnels fan art of Neb, Maeve, and Feruza. So if you can find that online, I'm sure people have been uh, reposting. Um, and we've definitely talked, we don't have it right now to show you, but um, down the line, we're talking about maybe doing a little fan art reel as stuff comes in, to sort of share all the incredible things that uh, you're all doing so out beautiful. there. So beautiful. Yeah. They're so, so great. Very exciting. I like that it's <laughs> dealing with the reflections and things like that. <laughs> Very cool. So go look for that, uh, that incredible artwork and we will share it uh, in the future. Anon. Okay, perfect. How do they fall asleep in all of this? I guess I think it's exhaustion. You're exhausted, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you can't help it. Yeah. yeah, it's also 3 a.m. and you've been up probably since, you know, your normal wake up the day before. So mm -hmm. this has been a long day, 20 hour day, something like that. All right, everyone long rested? Yes. Okay. As you begin to open your eyes, as the sunlight coming through the windows has been kind of moving across the sky and it's now just beginning to touch your eyelids as they begin to kind of twitch and begin to open your eyes, each of you, within a few minutes of each other. It is bright daylight outside. As you look down at your phones, about the right time. It's about noon. Uh, you've slept almost half the day away. As you kind of shake your head and stretch and look around, you start to feel, oh, you're a little sore, but you do feel 
better. You feel like most of your body could kind of get moving again. You're a little stiff, a little sore, but you know, things are scabbing over and beginning to kind of, your body is doing its own natural healing that it, it normally does. Um, looking around, you can see that yes, some of the powdered sugar has been scattered. Not much. There's a footprint in one. And then it seems to, you know, like one of those little nopes, uh, <laughs> little cat nopes in the snow or something like that. It seems to have backed off. Um, and everything kind of within this little cocoon that you've created with all of your stuff, nothing seems to have been changed. You know, there was part of me that thought I was going to wake up and it was all really going to be a dream. But, uh, but it's not. Same. Yeah. <laughs> it could be one of Absolutely. those dreams where you wake up and you're still in the dream. It's entirely possible. It's entirely yeah. possible. But at this point, right? I feel like it's worth just, if that's true, just running with the dream, right? <laughs> Oh, if this was a dream, my back wouldn't hurt so much. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm opting for my bed tonight. Yeah. Okay. Perusa, how are you feeling? Disturbed in here. Anyone, anyone see anything? We see the flower has been a little messed with, but otherwise, Silas Did is trapped. Did anybody get up for the restroom or... No, you all were exhausted. This was a yeah. solid night's sleep. So wait, something actually was in here. It looks like from the outside, someone put a foot in the flower, withdrew it, and either jumped across. And nothing else has been disturbed other than that one little nope footprint. <laughs> we're fairies. <laughs> it's true. The flower doesn't work what? if they fly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Always leave down flower for wear fairies. <laughs> Hashtag train <laughs> fast. So <laughs> no, I was thinking about this last night. I don't know if I've thought of anything else, but it's interesting that we can interact with all the stuff on this train and so can the other people wherever they are. We left a note. We oh, you left a Maeve note. had a great idea. Yeah, may have had a great idea. There are like all those movies where if you're in two different worlds or something, and it's like, oh, I left you a note, and it was like, oh, I love you, or you know, whatever. And then they're like, oh, it's so it's so sweet and special because you but, guys but wrote, like, I love you to them. No, 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 no. <laughs> may Maeve had such a great idea, and uh, but we gotta go check uh, Gloria's bed. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Everyone let's gets go. up. As you go into the dining room, um, you can see that the chairs that you had sort of moved around and all the things, they're all sort of still where they were. Um, but as soon as you cross into the corridor that heads down, there's stuff scattered all along the floor in this area. Um, as you go peer into the crew quarters, you can see that any of the sort of little things that had been left around, a couple of them are, are gone now. As you make your way down towards the kitchen and the pantry, you can see that cupboards have been what you know ripped open and and items taken from there now a lot of the, the foodstuffs and things are gone um as you make your way over to the personal quarters here as well um bags that were on the floor have are gone a lot of personal effects seem to have been sort of disappeared um as you come back down to the ladies room to uh gloria's and uh, um augie's space you see that your note has been crumpled up and placed over on the desk and burned. Robin, what? You're making a face. <laughs> well, I am oh. too. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What did the note say? Uh, it said. It said Silas was one of the things. Uh, it just said then, Silas on well, it? No, 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 no. Made, made large her, her really good stuff. capital letters, just yeah. in case. And she called me a name too. But, um, <laughs> but what was the, uh, what did you say, Maeve? I, I've slept since then. What did you say? Uh, I said we had gotten into room A. We had gotten stuck in some sort of dream world that we needed help that they should communicate with us uh, 
and then I handed it off to you to talk about being able to see them. Yeah, yeah. And and then I, I, yeah, I added, can you see us because we can see you? Now that I'm saying it out loud, it seems a little more creepy than <laughs> I thought it was when I wrote it. But um, And now it's crumpled and burned. Why, why would they do that? I wonder if they thought it was a prank. No, a really bad, a really, a really... A not well thought out prank, but a prank. Well, yeah, I mean, I said we can see them, so yeah, that could be misconstrued. It's a, Maybe. it was a very good idea, but I'm sorry, I messed that up, everybody, because that was so no, creepy. No, no, don't worry. About I would have written the same thing. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Do you just... think they left? Oh, I mean. I, I mean, this no, might be they, kind of a popular sort of opinion, but um, do you think maybe like some, I don't know, robbers or whatever noticed that there was a stalled train and came out and broke in and took things? Is that a possibility? Oh, I don't know. Train train robbers. Robbers. Tell me about the robbers that are living in the woods in the middle of nowhere well, waiting for a us. train to stall. Do you know about them? Anything? Who these people might be? No, I mean, it could have been but werefairy, you know. robbers. What? Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> there are all kinds of weird things going on. So it could have been robbers. I mean, I have, well, or the White I, Walkers, yes. Uh, well, no, listen, like, I, maybe I it's know, the Phantom of the Opera. I mean, potentially, but what, but what I'm saying <laughs> is, I have well. seen a, uh, you know, room that has been ransacked before. Yeah. Looking for something, so. It absolutely favors that kind of thing. We should probably check the rest of the train and maybe see if we can still see them. Kind of, sort of. It sounds like we scared them off. Would you you mind if we just take a look here at some of the flooring? Because we have a lady suite here. We have a master suite here. We have a toilet here and two more rooms. Okay. The train was renovated. Could this be the second car? Well, Well, let's get to it and rip up some cars. Just the corners. (laughs) We don't need to damage the whole thing, but looking anywhere we can to see if this could be. Peel back the floor or possibly chop into it and see. (laughs) Let's not chop in. Uh, you know what? Let me tell you something. I don't mind chopping into this train because at the end of all this, when we're done, when I call up my firm, we're going to own this train, okay? And mm-hmm. any other train that this company thinks it has, right? Well, you won't own 25% of shares because those belong to Steam and Serger, Serger specialty builders. Or whoever. Wow, but them. they're not around anymore. So who did it go to? Well, mm. whoever bought them, right? Yes. Are there any other... Is any of the books about anything in the like lounge? Yeah. Is there any Steam and Serger, Serger? Nothing that relates to that particular company though. At this moment I'm a little more curious about what happened to the people and uh, <laughs> what what kind of situation we're left in. So, yeah, But if we, we want to start with pulling that. If we, we, want need, we need to find civilization at some point. I mean, honestly, because there is a lot. Like, there are only three remote millibars for some reason. <laughs> only three of those. Yeah. But we have other food, but it's not going to last forever either. Looking at the map, yes. oh, that's the time ta- table. Yes, time table. And the map. Mm-hmm. It seems like we're relatively close. Close to what? Walking distance close, or it would be a few more minutes by train. So. Yes, a few miles and a, a substantial miles. walk. But oh, okay. to to the mine is to that what mine. we're talking about? Yeah. I don't know what we're going to find in an abandoned mine. Um, Maybe a gift shop with people yeah, who work shop. there. But I mean, is this the... what the, what they had told us about the mine, Twin Creeks Mining Company. They had lots of tunnels. They were finding yeah. gold, so it was mining gold, and then they were mining coal because the gold disappeared. <laughs> They were going to take us for a little tour, right? And then we're going to bring us through. It was going to be your first excursion today, yes. Mm-hmm. It was You're already make... late. It was two hours ago you were supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, the 8 a.m. was never reasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think 
Robin has a good point, though. It's there's probably some houses, even if there's just a couple, you know, people who would have worked at the mine mm -hmm. and and now <gasps> turned into this well, tourist there's town. town. There's Hollow the Vale. That was the, that's, that's not walking distance from the mine, is it? Or is it? That would or have been the, the next day's adventure. You're not entirely sure how far away that is. Um, give me an investigation check if you'd like to see how long you think that would be. Uh, 16. Okay. Um, she, Gloria's got another five hour train ride from the mine to Hollowvale. Um, so that is a long, long walk. Um, so definitely, you know, it would, it was going to be the, an overnight while you guys slept, they would have moved the train. All right. Well, let's, let's take a good look around. See, yeah. see if we can see what happens to everybody if they really up and left maybe if we can figure out if they did leave and they went in a specific direction that might help us because if they went in one direction they probably know where to find help and see what we can find and go from there they know more than us and so maybe like we should just burn some things maybe that like release them or you think it's a superstition well, I mean, if magic is real, some superstitions probably are too, right? Fair. What would you like to burn? Well, I don't know. <laughs> like, there's got to be some oil in that pantry. Oh, this you, you, like a very bad idea. You are looking to burn the train. You're not looking to burn <laughs> the, the train. train. Is our it could be a small life part life. of the train. Well, let's... we could burn the white wall. You're talking about. The, 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 the enormous away. ball of boulders? Yeah, like, well, <laughs> rocks that's probably... that's the sarcasm thing she said. Never mind. Okay. Well, um, maybe, maybe we should, before we do anything, maybe we should go, I'll, I'll go to the, the car that has, like, the MREs and things, and I'll, I can get some of those if once we leave the train. I just want to make a note that we should probably take some okay. food items with us somehow. I'm going to go them. get dressed for the day and... <laughs> <laughs> We'll just do your makeup and hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll just act like nothing has happened. Get to this town and figure things out as we go. And then find a shard of a mirror that we can bring back to try to help um, the, the woman whose name I still am not sure if we're supposed to say out loud. <laughs> standing here. Uh, yeah. Give her a code name. And Voldemort. <laughs> can change one letter. Her name's Icy. Hey. Seems I see. see. That's that's. I like it, except we might actually use icy in a different connotation, considering all the stuff. True. Maybe, maybe. Um, that's uh, why I liked it. Uh, what's Vine. another? Oh, Vi yeah, that's where I was going with like uh, something else that means that word. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, the, the lady named Vines. Poison. <laughs> where Ooh, do you get like poison from? Poison. <laughs> I'm going to go with vines. Okay. 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 Oh, I, I totally just said Ivy out loud, by the way. As he does. Quickly <laughs> look As you look around, you don't currently see anything in this particular area. See, it's fine. We can say Ivy. I, I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go get dressed. <laughs> okay. And okay. see. So and we Robin, can do some looking around. Robin, Feruza, and uh, Neb all go to the sleeper car to your rooms or to the luggage car to pick up supplies, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Maeve and Silas, are you going to join them in that pursuit or are you going to do something else? I would like to go equip myself before okay. I get dressed, gather okay. my things. Shower. So everyone goes back to their rooms. The first thing you notice is your rooms are exactly as you left them. Um, nothing has been disturbed here. Um, your things are put away. Everything is just as it was. The luggage car, however, for Ruza, as you go back there to check it out, um, lots has been taken from there. A couple of tents. There's still plenty, um, but tents have been taken. Um, some crampons, which are like you know, snowshoes almost, but they're little ice you know, picks on the bottom of them to, to, to climb over icy um, areas. So some gear is now missing. It's missing. I knew it. Train robbers. <laughs> Silas is going to go out there too and just see, <laughs> like, he's going to make his way towards yeah. that car 
and um, he's just kind of muttering under his breath the whole time. He's like, I knew I probably should have packed pants instead of just only shorts. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and and he's like look, looking to see if there are coveralls <laughs> or <laughs> anything that is going to be warmer than shorts. Someone else's language. Um, give me an investigation check. Let's see. Let's see. This is for, this is for his life. I hope this is high. Oh, no. um, and that is a one on the die. That's a one on the die. That is a one on the die. Which um, would give him a total of two. There, you are unable to find any um, snow, like snow pants or you know gear like that. You remember one or two pairs when you were here last night, but those are gone now. Um, the only thing you can find are emergency blankets, which are like the tin, not tin foil, but like the reflective material. Well, Silas actually has one of has them ready. Yeah. Bag. So, you know, you're fairly certain you could maybe, you know, staple those into a pant shape or something if you wanted to. Hey, does anybody know how to sew in our group? I think Maeve does. Not well. I mean, me, I'm not well. I, I don't know about oh. Maeve. Maeve may so very well. I, I didn't do very well in home ec class a bunch of years ago. And like, could, could, do we think that somebody could fashion some shiny pants for me? Robin probably can. I'm sure in one of her jobs on a resume, I'm sure she's has something. That makes total sense. Where, I, and and Silas I? starts to try to find. I mean, I guess you're in your room getting that, getting ready. Cool. Set you, don't leave That's the house without your lipstick, right? So you gotta go. Knocking on the outside of Miss Robin's, Robin's door. Ah, uh, yes, come in. I am decent. Uh, <laughs> that's that's excellent to hear. Uh, so, Miss Robin, I am not trying to be presumptuous with this, but um, you have so much life experience. Um, you've been a psychic, uh, apparently. <laughs> Five or six other things I've heard. Uh, like a happen, waitress. So. <laughs> do you happen to know your way around a needle? Because ah yes, I was a tailor's assistant for uh, six months. So oh oh, that's outstanding. Like what I don't know what type of fabric are we dealing with? Well, it's these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, I mean, well, I didn't pack any pants because I didn't think we were going to be like out in the elements for as long as we're about to be. I'll tell you what, I never step away from a challenge, but they may not be the most fashionable. Oh, I, I, I'm not worried about fashion. Um, obviously, look at me, I'm not worried about fashion. But um, but yeah, I just want to make sure that I don't die of hypothermia or get frostbitten limbs. I've got you. And she'll pull out some needle and thread <laughs> she's got little scissors in her bag she'll start cutting out like, like a pattern measurements amazing or... um, oh, I'd no, like... I've got this let's <laughs> do a um, advantaged dexterity check for crafting oh <laughs> kind of dexterity check. Okay, dexterity check oh gosh uh, okay that is going to be great you guys uh it's a 15 <laughs> hey, yeah. not bad at all um you know the the old sort of you know muscle memory that you did those because you know being a tailor's assistant you're having to do all the hand sewing work and they want you to do it fast right like you get those like oh my god we need this you know circle skirt hemmed in six hours and you know you just got three people trying to just go along and do this <laughs> you know so you just get right in the zone of that and you you pretty much real quick are able to kind of put together a pair of sort of you know pant like hammer pants yeah uh, like and, and that's over. hammer pants <laughs> hammer pants <laughs> and, and, and then... once silas gets them he honestly and then he starts like doing the dance. <laughs> so this is going to take Robin a moment. We're going to do like you know we're going to take take an hour kind of to have to have Robin uh, do that. So Robin and Silas, you'll be working on that in Robin's room as she crafts together your fantastic MC Hammer pants. Um, <laughs> Uh, Feruza, Neb, and Maeve, in this hour, is there any sort of downtime-ish activity that you would like to do? That can be exploring if you'd like, but we'll kind of speed it through a little bit so that we all get back on the same I'd like to look at the, the goodies yeah. I took from Silas. Okay, great. So the makeup bag <laughs> and also the hat. Fantastic. Um, so let's see. Give me an investigation check for those items. And based on the, the uh, number, we'll have Silas tell you a little bit about them. So it's a 21 for the, the first one and right, 21 a, for the an 18 for the second. And an 18 for the hat. All right, so a 21 for the cosmetics case, Silas. What does she learn about it? 
um, as uh, she opens it up, she sees that there is um, what looks like um, black hair that might be used in a wig. Um, that, but but it, it's not enough for like top of the hair. Uh, she sees that there's some kind of gel-like substance that um, you know might be used in um, Halloween masks. Mm -hmm. Um, she sees, um, you know, eyeliner, uh, she sees, um, you know, what, what looks like lipstick, um, mm -hmm. but, um, but it, it's, you know, not like a, a red, uh, cherry, you know, color of any sort. Um, and, uh, definitely looks like it's, it's something that, you know, a cosplayer might use or, you know, whatever else. And a, was it a 19 on the hat you said? Uh, it was an 18. 18 on the hat. hat so. Yeah, it's just a hat. Just a hat. Is it well loved, Silas? Uh, it, it's it's very well loved, and there's probably like you can uh, tell that um, somehow just the aura and essence of it is that you know it, it's possibly his most prized possession, and he would do anything to get it back. And um, his life is incomplete without it. <laughs> That's a lot to infer from that. I, I appreciate. It. Uh, you can just tell by the, the little sweat stain on the brim how often it gets worn and how how rarely it gets washed. But um, it, I, I will I will say po yes. probably with an eighteen, um, it it definitely does not ring a bell as to like if it's a, a minor league baseball right. team or, or, right, or anything right, right. like that. It's so very, logo very doesn't have familiarity yeah no familiar okay great uh so that's that's, that's good they take you about an hour to kind of go through those things and fade out so feruza and neb what would you like to spend this hour doing i after i get cleaned up and ready um there's a little bit of time that uh -huh. neb wants to spend she'll come out of her room and then go to room a and like okay. stand in the, the doorway <laughs> for a, a good moment or two kind of just yeah looking around see if there's anything she can see that's different she'll take the moment and look in the window on the yeah. opposite side and like uh, do a check in on this room yeah. perception would you like me to roll it yeah please what is it a plus three for you uh perception is a plus five plus five okay even just standing in the doorway of the place where, where this event happened in, in you sit there and you go, did this really happen? I, I, it feels like, again, ages ago. And and yet there's this little quickening in your heart, this little fear. As you turn and, and you look in the reflection, you just see yourself staring back. And as you look into the room now with sunlight from the side starting to, to, to stream in, other than that little haze in the air, it just looks like a room. But there is something about it that just strikes fear into your heart but it does appear to be exactly as it was the night before. She's gonna step in the room and go look at the mirror. As you walk over towards the mirror, it stands as it did. Um, nothing seems to have changed about it. The cold has dispersed. And so you no longer see any writing or anything upon the glass. I'm gonna take out my cell phone and take a picture because the wood had the carvings yes. in it indicating all the, the spots yes. and i know it matches the map but just for safety's sake she's going to take yes. that picture absolutely and then she's going to lean in towards the shard yeah <sighs> see if there's anything there as you all <laughs> you see pop up is just the little faintest remnant of release me but even that is fading I'm gonna try. I, I said I would. Might take a while though. <laughs> and she's gonna leave. And I think if she runs into Feruza, what, what she'll say is, okay. I, I'm gonna do like a, a walk up and down the train and see if I can find any more information about where everybody went, maybe? Did you, did you wanna join me or were you doing something else? No, I think I'm, and you notice that Feruza's like messenger bag is like full of stuff. So she's basically <laughs> taking everything that isn't tied or locked down and she put yeah. her messenger bag. And she's like, I'll, I'll, I'll come with you. Feruza right now is thinking to herself, like, what, what do you, and she feels stupid like doing it, mm. but in her head, she's like, what do you want from us? Whatever you are, mm. what do you want from us? 
That's you say that out loud, or you just think? Oh, you're just no, you know what? Yeah. She does say it out, say it out loud. loud. She forgets herself. <laughs> She's, what do you want from us? Just like give under me her breath. An insight check. Would you like me to do it, or do you want to roll? You do it. What is your bonus? It's nothing. So it's a zero. nothing. <laughs> As you stay, you know, you've joined Neb at the doorway to this room. And, and, and you just kind of, as you say this out loud to yourself, but to Neb, but to the world, wherever this is that you are, you can't quite believe it, still wanting a, a rational reason for, for why this is happening to you. And you are just met with confounding silence. Whatever this is, the answers are not As Nev invites you to go explore the train, um, are you planning on walking up and down inside the train? Or are you going to go out, outside the train? What is Where is it you would like to explore? Uh, Neb is dressed so that if we do go outside, okay. she's got jacket on, she's got the hoodie okay. on. She's uh, she's also kind of filled her, her side satchel with some extra stuff, a few yep. bits of clothing mm. that could fit in there. Okay, um, great. But I, I thought I'd start with just up and down inside of the train and see what okay. we could figure out. Yeah. And I'm still a little worried about training. going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything we left out before so, yeah. we. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get, um, I'll get perception checks from you and we'll kind of quickly just say, as you go back and forth and explore these sort of three cars that you have access to. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. And then uh, we'll have everybody join back in uh, for, the, for whatever you do next. So for the two of you, as you walk up and down, um, you start by, you know, this staying in this dining car and you check the, the toilets, the ladies room, the men's room, the kitchen, the pantry and the crew sort of hangout area. Um, give me a perception check for that space. Okay. Oh, that's a natural Ooh. 20. Natural 20. Natural 20. 20. <laughs> nice. Really? In way. Both did. Yep, I saw. Ah, I love it. I love it. Amazing. No freaking yeah. way. Okay. We're, we're on the same we're on the same page here. Also, it was the sleep. It was all the sleep. It was, it was the, the sleep, sleep and then mm -hmm. you you have a different perspective than me and I have a different perspective from you and we're just touching everything. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, Fantastic. High, 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 high. Te teamwork <laughs> makes um, the dream work. It does. Um so in this area, uh you're you're almost positive. The things that are missing here are the most important things to these people. So you're getting a strong sense that this was not robbers, unfortunately, Feruza. As you start to take, a, take it in more, you're going, these are people who were scared and they grabbed the things that were most important to them and ran. And even as you look at that burnt paper and you try to think about it from their perspective and you go, shit, if I got a letter from something in another, I would be so terrified. And, and as you look at it now, you're thinking, this is, these are people who are afraid of ghosts, of whatever is happening to them here. Things are moving. The train stopped. Uh, doors are open that were never open before. They, these are scared people. As you continue to make your way through the rest of the train, and you notice that your car has just been completely untouched. Um, you even as you peek outside to look, you can see footprints in the snow as they completely avoided your car. They are terrified. They're, they bananaed way out, did not want to come anywhere near the sleeper car. Um, they climbed into the luggage. You, 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 as you sort of look through the baggage car, they've taken everything they would need for a hike. And I will even offer, as you step out of the train, you think you may see some step, some footprints heading back the way you came, even though it is miles and miles, you know, miles and miles through the woods along these tracks to get back to Gravelhurst Station. That appears to be the direction that they went. So they, do you think, Ned, do you think the, these people noticed that we opened cabin A and decided to avoid us? and leave us or what do you what are you thinking I, I don't think they left us i think they saw the door was open because everything that we've been doing that affects the train they've seen and vice versa so i think they saw the door was open and everything that happened and they fled they ran i don't 
they probably couldn't even find us the same way we kind of saw but didn't really see them. They probably didn't even see us at all. You recall Augie sharing with you the story that when they first found this train, mm -hmm. it had been abandoned somewhere in the woods. No one upon it. And no one ever heard from anyone oh. on it before. And I'll... Oh, that's right. Yeah. How long were we in that room? Do you have a, an idea of how long we were in there? I mean, it felt like moments, minutes. I don't think it... It could have been longer than that because with how much is gone from this train, I, I think they got up in the, I think the stuff that they did happened at night while we were sleeping and, and they were gone at first light. I'm a little concerned about the fact that they went back because Instead that's, a, of yeah obviously forward which would be the most obvious thing to do because that's what we were gonna do it's <laughs> way closer but if they were scared then going the longer route back to uh an obvious safety instead of going forward to a mine that is still connected to this train but that's where we're gonna go that's where we're planning to go aren't we I mean, and she'll kind of she'll kind of look around for a second. I'm I don't know what the rest of you are going to do, but I'm going to keep going. I need to find out at least at that first stop if I can find a shard of that mirror. Are you guys heading back to talk to the others? Yeah. We'll okay. head back. We, we'll go so back. Neb and Feruza step back in, they find the three of you, uh, you know, just finishing up the pants. They look spectacular. Um, you know, <laughs> Maeve, you put your things back in your bag. <laughs> Did I so have an opportunity uh, to yeah. go return the cosmetics bag? Oh, he is you know, not in is his what room. I like to do is put it back. Give me a stealth check. We will contest it with Silas and um, uh -oh. Robin's perceptions. If I don't think I'm going to have a clear shot yeah. at putting it back, I will not try. So let me see. So yeah, because Maeve, well, no, uh, Robin, you are way at the end. So Maeve, you do not have to pass by her room to put it back. Uh, uh, a, a point here. I don't want to yes. throw a wrench. Go ahead. Uh, Silas definitely has his backpack with him at with this him. point, okay. like as he's because he was, okay. um, you know, trying to load up on pants and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. But, so no, that's 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 totally yeah. totally uh, uh, plausible and clear. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. So I Maeve, will we'll even say you you could have gone, you know, heard them in that room, took a peek in his room to see that his bag was not there. Okay. Um, so yeah. yeah so you you uh, have it back. You still have it. Um, all right, the others join you. Uh, what, yeah, who would like to share <laughs> what in the various information that you received uh, with one another? Uh, does anyone feel like helping me scrounge up some breakfast and we can tell you what we found? Yes. Ooh, I love this. Ooh, that's a good idea. Neb, Are would you like to make breakfast for everyone? <laughs> there is a kitchen. Would I like to make breakfast? Oh, I mean. It sounded like you were <laughs> scrounging. <laughs> I mean, I I was, I was like, scrambled eggs benedict or you know. i mean i was i was thinking see if there's some oatmeal or anything very simple but i'll i mean well, there are some that. granola bars a few of them there i, I think i want to save the granola for when we decide that we're leaving but yeah let's 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 go see what what kind of magic i can do in the kitchen all right. And then as she walks away, it's just like, what have I decided to do? <laughs> so you all make your way to the dining car area. Uh, Neb, if you're going to make some breakfast. Neb, did um, you just close the bakery part? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's a baker. Yeah, yeah, but I, this I, I thought so, yeah. So yeah. Silas is just hyping this. He, he's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, like she said she worked in a bakery in New York City. So this has got to be great. Silas, so um, um, making bagels and making <laughs> breakfast are two very different things. I do not have any skills outside of uh, dough. <laughs> but let's see what um, we can do. Would anyone like to help them? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah Robin will. Robin, of course. I was thinking. Right. 
Robin and Neb will make their way in the kitchen. The other rest of three of you can hang out in the dining room. You can clean up a little bit if you'd like. Go ahead, I'd also Maeve. like, I want to go put a line of salt in front of room A. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so, you know, Maeve excuses herself, takes one of the salt shakers and just sort of passes through back to the other room and uh, spreads uh, the salt. Just, and just little say, pinch over the shoulder, too, yeah, just, for just for good measure. <laughs> I will say at that point, he has put his bag back in his room. Again, okay. Oh, to, okay. To if I see better. that opportunity, mm, no, because that, mm, that I'm just saying, since you went back, is the reason obvious. I think that would be too obvious. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. he's just offering it. So, yeah. so Silas, as, as, as you all walk towards the dining car and past Silas's room, you put you know, you saw him place his bag in his room, and they was all there playing. any spot in his room that was still disturbed from the chaos of throwing everything around or did you make the room neat again uh silas certainly would not have made it neat okay i'm gonna go ahead and just like there's throw probably it glass under, the throw it under some of the towels that were draped okay. were not Ow. the new towels but okay. the old towels so that it looks like it could have just in the in the process of throwing things around just didn't make it back into now that. the towels gotcha. are super neat no i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> gotcha uh, so so you can fold your linens however you would like in fact if you can fold a fitted sheet um Possibly. that is actual sorcery and then there that's magic yeah. that's actual doing here. sorcery um okay um, fantastic yes yeah, so you sort of tuck you know, it under a thing yeah, kind randomly of corner just slightly peeking out yeah. and um you know make sure it's no no prints kind of situation yeah gotcha and line of salt in front of the door okay and line of salt in front of the door um so neb and robin in the kitchen um let's see what would be a good this feels like a I, like a oh go ahead I, i'll i'll say since yes. silas brought it up because this was a really nice kitchen and yes do i see the stuff to in order to actually like bake something oh yeah there's a beautiful sourdough starter uh, a lot of really good you know there's packets of instant yeast there's lovely flour a bunch of different types um there's even you know you can see uh uh you know um uh you know sesame seeds and poppy seeds and all sorts of little seasonings and things what would be the probably the simplest thing like muffins or mm -hmm. something you that i could muffins. there's fresh blueberries in the ice box Miss Robin, do you think you could take care of the, the wet stuff and I'll I'll try to make some muffins? I all I heard was scrambled eggs and bacon. <laughs> that'll work, that'll work. And I will I will make muffins. So yes, so uh luckily the perishable things are still here. Those were not taken. So there are there is eggs, there is bacon, um, you know, the the blueberries and, and flour and baking soda and everything is still available for you. So um you all begin to make breakfast um for everyone. So with that <laughs> Um, let's sort of, we'll wrap up a tad bit early here, I think, with breakfast. We'll come back, breakfast having been made. Um, let's have a little conversation about what your next steps are so that when we come back, we can jump right in. Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> while, yeah, while you all are, while you're cooking, while the three yeah. of you are sitting and waiting and cleaning up, what are, what are the conversations you have about what you would like to do next? I'm going to eat four blueberry muffins okay. <laughs> and at least five pieces of bacon and probably half the scrambled eggs because mm -hmm. people normally don't actually do the scrambled eggs. <laughs> um, but that's only if other people aren't going to, you know, I'm not going to put other people out. Right. It's only if right. it's left. Gotcha. Robin's, you guys going made to, uh, Robin's going to suggest that we just take the tracks all the way down. We don't need to go in the woods. We don't need to try to make shortcuts that it's very important we can just follow the tracks because that's where they were going to go anyways mm. really and you are suggesting to go towards the mines or towards back towards town towards the mines towards the mines okay and mm. neb would agree well, with that okay and look there's we have how big are the boulders um the boulders yeah if you you know want to just sneak up there and take a look during this time as well as you're waiting for breakfast um there are a couple that are quite large uh definitely big but it's mostly um, as you kind of look up at the mountain, almost like there was an avalanche, uh, snow and rock just kind of came down and flooded down over the, the tracks. Um, it's the kind of thing that 
potentially could be moved and cleared, um, but it would take quite a bit of work. Because what but we can't go around is, them, right? You can get around them, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, is that perhaps we can get a cart at the mine? Maybe there's something we can use to help clear the debris. But then we'd have to, like, move the train. I mean, does anybody have any experience, with, ask Robin, driving a train? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Well, no, I've never driven a train, but I was a railway maintenance engineer. I can weld track and I am a safety inspector. I so like if we ever get these rocks out, I'll make sure that if there's welding equipment on the train, of course, I can make sure that the track is safe to run the train. Are you train kidding me right now? <laughs> I am not kidding you. It's on my list. It's on our list. I, I mean, yes. Okay, that's all you need to know is your pants should tell you all you need to know about Robin. She knows how to do a lot of things. I when love Robin, my beautiful shiny pants. When Robin worked at the bakery, yes. like the stories that she had, I, I believe that she can do anything, really. Yeah. I do, too. I, I do like Feroz's idea of going to the mine and, and seeing if there's... I mean, I've seen it in cartoons, but one of those hand carts, but there's got to be something like that. Yeah, that was yeah, that was Maeve's idea. Yeah, to, to kind of yeah, I was say, I didn't think that's for the mind. Yeah, Sorry. Maeve, that's okay. To use the cart to try to clear some of the debris. Yeah, use well, tools whenever you can. Yeah. Well, and to to come either back and try to clear the the rocks or or continue forward. Because... Or we might find something more interesting in the mine, right? Well, yeah, we're gonna find a shard of the mirror. Wait, do we need to bring the mirror with us? Like, because you don't want to get all the way to the end of finding all the shards, and then we have to go well, all the way back. Wait, wait a minute. What? The gold suddenly disappeared one day. Is it possible that the gold was ported the same way we were? Maybe. Are you saying there's going to be gold when we get to the mine? <laughs> I'm saying it's a possibility. Ghost gold. Ghost Cole! Ghost Cole! Yay! Episode title. No. Ghost Cole. Yeah. Also, uh, you've heard of Fool's Gold. <laughs> now I'm find your ghost gold. gold. Now all we need to find is a is a ghost FAO Schwartz. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Robin did it at some point. Silas, uh, I'm going to pull out the map on my phone that I yes. took a picture of. It looks like the track does a complete circle. So if we follow the track all the way around, I mean, it's a really long way, but. Once we get through the, the Farnshaw Wilds, yeah. we'll be back at Gravelhurst Station and we could go back to the train. But then what What if somebody comes, like, you know, and steals the mirror? If someone comes steal and... a broken mirror. If someone has come and stolen a broken mirror, then they know what's going on and I want to talk to them. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to bring up one thing that me and Ned did notice when we were walking, and Frizz is trying to keep up with Silas's eating. She can't, right? right she's okay. eating a lot. <laughs> she's really skinny, it's like really tall, but it's so also trying delicious. To... Like, yeah, like, everything's like, really good. Uh, Neb and and Robin were not lying about their skills. It's like it's delicious. It's but you know, it's not fancy food like maybe Alexander was promising you, but it is hearty, like filling, delicious food, and buttery, and oh, like everything else. Yeah, yeah the syrup is pop it everything's mm -hmm. good so um when 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 Nev and I were sort of uh doing like our sort of reconnaissance of the uh the cabins what's left of the train uh, one thing that we noticed it seemed like everybody was escaping like running for their lives like they were scared we don't really have a timeline of how long we were in that room but we we think they everyone may have left while we were sleeping and they didn't touch this car they took off from every everything else so mm. one thing that brought up was that the footprints that we saw outside were going back not that's back. like so far away yes but they're if going they were... to die in the cold i mean in, in in fairness we're talking or i'm talking about continuing forward around a track that's a lot of walking oh no 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 i i don't want to be misunderstood i want to go forward i'm just saying that wow are you if yeah. they're going back that way i was on the outside of the train for a little while and it was a long time <laughs> we, we were a yeah. long way from that that station where we left i can well, kind I of hope to, i hope that they survive the trip 
I don't think we can help them anyway because we can't even talk to them. That's true. That's true. Imagine but, how scared you have to be to instead of going where you think the obvious, but to go all the way back, how scared you'd have to be to do that. So what did they know about what happened the last time this happened? The last time what happened? That the train got stuck. And people disappeared. I don't think they thought really anything of it, according to Augie. They just found the train and... I don't even remember her talking about that. What did she say? Well, we know that once... Well, short, it was in the 30s, right? Oh. When that happened? I didn't yeah, pay much attention ago. to any of that because it <laughs> yeah. seemed like it was way in the past <laughs> and completely irrelevant. So yes, the, the story you had heard is that when they found the train up here on this track, it was just abandoned and everyone who was aboard, gone. just gone. I have almost 10 people that were on the train, all gone. All gone. A lot of trains. I'm yep. so and glad you're all around because I totally would have missed all of that. And we also know that Julian disappeared suddenly yes. with his bride and he had had a complete change of heart when he started seeing her yes um, and we know that the um i've already forgotten what we're calling her the lady we're not supposed to mention vine. yeah <laughs> the, um uh, miss vine that's the, the woman that julian was in love with but the that awful creature that we fought that was not julian how do we Remember, know that we we asked we asked it well, we know that, yeah. we know that she was in love with Julian. We aren't sure that that's the person that Julian was in love with. That's We've true. We've never heard her name. So. <laughs> so there's a love triangle. Look, I'm just calling it like I've seen it. I have seen so many of those situations that just made chaos. It's a, so. it's a just ghost like a story in a soap opera. Yeah, it's a ghost yes. soap opera. Ghost soap opera. So with that, <laughs> five of you around the table enjoying a delicious home-cooked meal aboard one of, as either a haunted train and perhaps it's you that is haunting it. We're not sure. Um, having made the decision to move forward and try to find the mines. And uh, with that, I also I want to uh, correct. We I read the uh, the artist wrong for the fan arts. I will fix that again. That is at Rav, so R A V underscore B N N E H. Uh, hopefully that will send you to the correct artist. We had a, a, a auto correct spelling issue in the <laughs> in the <laughs> chat that got that uh, uh, confused it for me. But um, I again thank you to them and thank you to mm. all of you. With yeah. that, we will conclude this chapter. Of Children Rete, and please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night, everyone. <laughs>